Next news out of Iraq. Iran strikes seem intended to avoid U.S. deaths. Here's why that might be the case. Um, so, yeah. Wait, can Wednesday you read that morning. again because it didn't come through for it. Guys, be careful with your microphones. Don't let it touch your uh, shirt. Read that again, Ali. No problem. Location out of Iraq. Iran strikes. Okay, wait. Seem okay, wait, we're getting so much background noise for the microphone. Try it again. Yeah. Okay. Out of Iraq. Iran strikes seem intended to avoid U.S. deaths. Here's why that might be the case. Okay. Wednesday morning, uh, missiles struck at two different U.S. Um, base areas. Um, but it seems like they were not designated to kill Americans at all. Mm. Um, no Americans were killed with these missiles. So... Um, they're wondering why this was. This is retaliation to Soleimani's um, assassination. They're wondering what's going on here. So uh, this this writer came up with three different explanations as to why he thinks this could be the case. One, that Khamenei um, is out of touch with his military and what they can achieve, and he overestimated the effectiveness of the strikes. The no. second idea is that the moderation won out, um, and this is largely just an empty signal. Um, and third, that it might be a bid by Iran to lull the U.S. into a false sense of security. Armin, what do you think about this? I mean, the most um, the most likely scenario is that they, they wanted to show their... But see, the United States and Iran's government, they both want to show to their base that they took a strong position and they're both trying to avoid a full-on conflict, okay? So they both don't want to look weak and this is why, why it's very difficult for both of them. How can you show? How could you show a sh strong response? Because if you don't show a strong strong response, you're letting the other side get away with an attack, but also make it very strong, but not strong too strong for it to force the other side to go to a full on conflict, right? So I think, and they both recognize that the other side is playing the same game. So the best thing to do is to just signal the, the other guy that look. This is our last revenge. Can you guys also <laughs> make it the last revenge? Like we need something. We both need something that we could go tell our the the people on our side that want war. That look, we were so strong, and we. But but you guys could go to your side and also claim that you guys were the victorious. So Iran made that calculation that look, if we hit their bases, um, but there's no Americans there, then because if there are Americans there. That's suicidal, right? That is just suicide, right? Because then the United States have no choice but to attack Iran full, full on conflict. So let's just call, like leak the fact that we're attacking so that they could pull out the troops. Um, and then we will go like, oh, we will show them. And they even they even kind of spread fake news in Iran that 80 Americans were killed, right? Uh, with no Americans were killed like they they realize that dude, if if the news comes out that no Americans were killed and that we leaked it That's gonna be so look so pathetic, right? But so again, it's a very hard thing for both sides to do to show that like they they took their revenge But also tell the other side to calm down. This wasn't that big of a deal, right? So this was the this was the calculation that Iran came came up with and I think it might have worked if they didn't kill so many Iranians in the process. Because right now, the Iranian government is killing more Iranian in their act of taking revenge of the United States than Americans ever. Like, what did Trump do? Trump killed one Iranian terrorist, Soleimani, and in their great revenge that the, Iranian, the Islamic Republic promised to take against the United States, they're just accidentally killing Iranians, left and right. First, they had this whole uh, fu giant funeral all over Iran, for Soleimani, and we had a stampede that how many Iranians got killed in that one? I think 56. Okay, I think the latest numbers were higher, like around 80. And then they yeah. shot down their own plane, which another, how many civilians were on that? Like, wow, you, you know, next time Iran wants to take revenge against the United States, Iranians should just go high. Like, this is, this is like, I mean, they, they were, they were enjoying the PR for a while. Um, a lot because they, okay, so so they, so Iran was very desperate to shift the attention away from the fact that people were protesting against the uh, government just a few months ago, right? So the killing of Soleimani was great for them. They were like, "Oh, look, America attacked us," and then you like create this false 
sense of unity in the country like oh like look when it comes to america attack us we're all on the same side and they had some even some anti-government people come in support of Soleimani and that would look very good for a very short amount of time and then I, I, I even tweet right when this was happening, I even tweeted like, okay, this, they're creating an illusion of unity, taking attention away from the protests. Like Soleimani's death it seemed to be very valuable for Iran and for Iran's government for a short time. But I, but I said in that tweet that this illusion of unity is not going to last long. Why? Because, you know, you're, you can't, you can't use PR moves like this to put food on people's uh, table. You can't use PR moves like this to fix like long, uh, you know, very deep rooted divisions between different tribes in Iran. So it's going to last for a little while, but it's going to go away. But even I didn't expect it to be gone after just three days because of the blunders that because of the stampede and also because of this airplane shot. Like we had large crowds, massive crowds coming for support of Soleimani in Iran just a few days ago. Now, if you look at what's happening since last night, my time at least, now we have crowds out against in the street again against the government because they shot down their own plane. They, do, you, uh, do I need to explain how they shot down their own plane to people or people know? I'm just going to say it just really quickly for people that they don't know. Because when Iran attacked M U United States military bases in Iraq, they were on a so, such high alert that United States might attack Iran, uh, even though they didn't kill any Americans, that I think they had like all their anti-air, uh, you know, everything on and everybody was just waiting for something to happen and all of some some dumb people made a mistake and they shot down their own plane like it, look well it was a ukrainian plane but they had a, a lot of iranians in there right and they had a whole bunch of canadians in there there were some afghans in there this is like an international nightmare so this whole so soleimani pr Nobody's talking about it. Like people are not talking about Soleimani anymore because now everybody's talking about the plane. This is such an international <laughs> nightmare. So, so no, no, Iran, Iran's like use of Soleimani's death is over, right? They, they, I think they were hoping that they could use it for another month or two, but nobody's talking about it anymore after three days. But anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. You guys, go ahead. Well, I don't really have anything to add. So you had a good perspective, unless Ali or Ali. um, Chopin. Yeah, I was saving this one for Armin, so okay. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. Uh, Shopam, do you want to add anything? When it's Iran, it's Armin, so <laughs> you okay. just say it, everything. Okay, I'm going to just read the top comment by Kelly. Uh, she or he is saying, it is a weird feeling when you grow up uh, to think U.S. is the good guys. They sell freedom and democracy like crazy just to find that they are actually the bad guys. Uh, is that do you mean by saying that are you talk, are, are, do you think the ayatollah is a good guy in this equation because let me tell you there's no good guys in this equation there's no good guys anywhere in this equation okay like what do people think people think like oh america like is is this a when you guys read this is this a, do you read this as a suggestion that united states is the baddies here and iran's government are the good guys here because that's how i read it I read it as a suggestion that the United States is the baddies and everybody else is the goodies. <laughs> is it, uh, to me, it feels like people just can't see past any binaries. Binary, like, yeah. if there's someone bad, there has to be someone good. It's, it cannot be like two different people who are both bad fighting against each other. No. Right. It has to be a binary. Exactly. All right, let's go. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. 
انضميت مؤخرا لاسره ايثيست ريبابليك وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغه العربيه As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.